We really don't have to get all sweaty over these changes, but like, <laughs> let's freaking do it. Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about R76 versus R83, whether you should do it, should you not. Uh, generally, yes, you should just do it. And that kind of sums up my video. Let's pack it up, boys. But for you sweatier guys like me, let's freaking get into like discussing each of these characters and seeing if we should or shouldn't, if these marginal differences, you know, they make a difference and what kind of context we're looking at here. You can't look at it and just be like, oh, well, Akari gets more attack and that's, you know, that's better. I mean, you can, but that's... Moving on. All right, I want to talk about some like broadly observed trends here before we actually get started. So first of all, if you're a casual, just slam it all. Like honestly, I would not think too hard about this. Like it's it's only the completionist inside of me that like likes to max out the characters that I use. And so that's what I would do. And honestly, it is okay. It, it really is not going to make that much of a difference. All of these numbers, these are... These are marginal, right? Like upgrading from 7.6 to like 8.3 max refine. It's not going to help you if you have like a crappy arena comp, beat out another comp. Look at my Nozomi, 19.752 HP. That's about 20k HP. And if we flick back to the spreadsheet. So if I upgraded her to like R8.3, she would gain 534 HP and lose a bunch of defense for it as well and get that tiny little bit of attack. Like 534 HP, it's, this is, this could be variance that you can attribute to like dodge mechanics. Like the difference is just so small that even dodge can make it up. If we're talking clan battles, these values, well, I think for the attackers, maybe it's worth like to, you know, to think about it. But for the most part, you're going to be dropping more damage from like having bad rotations or timings more than like, you know, being R7.6 instead of R8.3. Now, if you want to get sweaty like me and then hop on this train because we're going in deep into the mountains baby this is for the min maxes the guys that are you know really pushing it especially for clan battle fighting for that top five top tens kind of spot for arena generally strategy tactics and like team composition is going to matter way more i beat comps that have like 3k more power than mine and and i've lost similarly so i've just kind of got like some general observations or rules that i kind of apply to this wave recovery is generally negligible because you can brute force your way through like most things if the attackers are going to get more damage they go up and they are top priority. If tanks get tankier, they also go up, but less priority because CB. Remember, CB damage is king. For everyone else, we could kind of consider their TP gains, but like again, it's so marginal. It's just so unlikely that you're going to be able to get a third union burst because of this. And don't quote me on this, guys. Don't quote me on this. Maybe this actually enables some like cheesy, weird strat, but honestly, I don't see it. Okay, without further ado, let's get into each character and go through them. First, we've got Akari. She's losing some HP for some attack and HP recovery. Uh, honestly, I would take this. I would say go up for arena because that might help her hit that Miyako harder especially if you got physical units that are missing for Akino she's losing HP gaining a bit of attack and gaining life steal which is pretty cool honestly I think the combination of attack and life steal will give her more sustain than losing 521 HP will for that reason I'll take her up but again Akino you guys know like low priority higher priority ish if you use her in arena we've got Anna who's gaining HP gaining magic attack hold up wait what is she losing then oh this stuff and eh, I'll take it I'll take it like that's that's easily like that outweighs this HP recovery like your Anna she's going to be in the arena right and she's going to be shooting off of her UB and then and then die this is going to help kind of make sure that she gets it off and that she will be able to do a, a little bit more damage we've got Aoi who's an interesting one because the first thing I saw was the dodge and for that reason and the attack I would actually take her up only if you use her in arena dodge is just like such a meme mechanic like most characters don't have that much dodge but like I've actually failed a lot of arena battles because the Tamaki has been dodging my frigging Monica and Mitsuki. Next, we've got Arisa, attacker in CB. She gains attack and energy recovery rate, loses HP and wave. Easy, she goes up. She does more damage for CB. Chica, we've got a healer. Generally, I'm going to say deprioritize healers. Um, she gets more attack, magic defense. Honestly, this none of this really changes anything for me. A low priority. Jita, DPS, similar deal to Arisa. Gets more attack for HP and gets nothing else. I would, I would still take that. Eriko, same, same. She gets more attack, loses HP for it, but that's okay. If she's going to die because of 301 attack, then she was going to die anyway. Hatsune is an interesting one. She actually loses attack, but gains a whole bunch of different stats. And why this is interesting is because like, you know, her and Tamaki, you know, forever locked in battle. She going to win? Is Tamaki going to win? As an AoE mage, magic attack kind of like matters a little bit less, kind of not really, but like I can definitely see the case in boosting her up just to survive that Tamaki. Again, I really believe that, you know, having a good team comp will overcome all of this, anything in the spreadsheet. But honestly, I would just slam it like all of the other ones. But I think this one is a case by
by case basis. If you find that your Hatsune is like, you know, only just dying, this could really help actually. Yori, attack her. She gets attack and she gets, ooh, physical crit. Man, this is definitely go up. If you're using Hiyori in clan battle, she goes up. I O, she's gaining a lot of stats and not losing overly much. I would probably go up with I O. Like again, HP recovery rate and wave energy recovery. Like you're not going to use much of that, especially in arena. We've got Jun who's gaining HP and attack, but losing defense and magic defense. I think, I reckon that this HP gain offsets that loss in the defenses. There's not really much going on the rest of the stats. Like I would do it, but like low priority, very low priority. Kari attack and physical crit. Oh my gosh. This is a, oh, energy recovery rate up as well. Oh, this is a go. Garu, Carol, um, yeah, attack up. I will take that HP recovery rate up. Okay. That's whatever. But yeah, I'll take this. She's an attacker. 97 HP and one from each defense is not going to save her from anything. However, since you can't dodge magic damage, she might, you know, kill that Miyako. Kokoro is an interesting one because I wonder if this HP and these little bits of defense actually makes her more viable in some other bosses in clan battle for Kokoro switching. I'm personally going to slam this because I think that it's going to help. Kokoro, you're not really relying on her attacks anyway. Like you're looking mainly for her tank switch, which I'm wondering if this like, you know, enables opportunities. I'm going to do it just because I want to test it. Uka gains HP and attack, but loses magic attack and defense and magic defense and loses energy recovery rate. It's, uh, I don't know about this one. Think about it. Attack, she's not attacking that much. 160, like I'm pretty sure like any auto from any character is more than 160. This is probably the bottom of the tanks for me. Kurumi is an interesting one because 730 HP is pretty good and she's not losing, she's losing lifesteal for a tank. Like that doesn't even matter. Okay, if you use her, then probably higher up in the tank category. Lima is losing HP for some attack, some defense and lifesteal on a tank. It's very interesting guys. Um, um, I'd probably say low priority, especially because tank. My hero is gaining HP and attack, giving up a little bit of defense and nothing else. I'll take this if you're using her. It seems like, you know, the HP and the defense is kind of balanced out, but she's gaining attack for it. She's an attacker. Attack is what you want. Typically, you don't use my hero in clan battle though, but this is like more arena oriented. We've got Maho who's gaining HP, losing attack, gaining magic attack, losing defense, gaining magic defense and gaining HP recovery rate and losing, uh, this is a, this is a mess. Honestly, the numbers here are like so negligible. You should prioritize everyone else first. This is just not going to change anything. Like losing through defense, she's still going to be able to take two hits from Tamaki. Makoto losing HP, losing magical defense for 145 attack. That's quite respectable and some lifesteal and some energy recovery rate. I like that. I like that a lot. I will take this for sure. She's going to be doing more damage overall and she might get some TP boost. Like, but generally this is a good pick. If you gains HP attack, attack, loses a bit of defense, and that's kind of it. Uh, if you use Mifuyu, I will take this. You get the attack. Mimi gains HP, loses attack, loses a bit of other things that really don't matter. I will take this for sure. However, because the attack she gains is so low, I'd probably say a little bit lower on priority. Misaki gains attack and loses a whole bunch of defensive stats, gains HP recovery rate, and has extra life steal. I think it's okay. Like, she's not losing too much for a little bit of attack. Obviously, like, you know, not, not too priority. Misogi, that interesting. Why is Misogi getting crit. Oh, I, this character is just such a massive mess. Like dodge energy recovery rate. Like, you know, I see 12 dodge and I want to slam it right away. She's kind of more like a bruiser and then you give her physical crit. Look, if you use Misogi, these are all really good stats that she's gaining and losing like crappy stats. And that's, that's really good. So if I wasn't clear, yeah, you can bring her up. Mitsuki is gaining HP, attack, gaining physical defense, losing magical defense, uh, wave recovery doesn't matter. And that's overall a win. I mean, she gains a little bit and and not losing too much. I will take this. But honestly, because she's a support, this is kind of like lower priority. She's not an attacker. We've got Miyako losing HP. That's interesting. Gaining defense, magic defense, gaining attack and gaining dodge. That's what I was looking for, Miyako. Honestly, I think the defense, magic defense and the dodge all completely outweigh the 198 loss in HP. I would take this one. Monica is losing a lot of attack for a lot of survivability. Wow. And lifesteal. Unfortunately, I don't think she can make use of the lifesteal too much, but that HP this is actually quite a significant boost. For me, I'm definitely considering it because Monica is actually targeted by Tamaki when there is no other like magic attacker on the field. Typically, my Monica lives, but it's actually kind of like cutting it real close. So I think it's for that reason that I might take her up, but I can see why you wouldn't want her because of the attack. Ninon is, whoa, losing a whole bunch of survivability for 
or a lot of attack, I guess. Yeah, I'll freaking take it. Dude, think of the memes. You're freaking bombing them at this point. Nozomi gains HP, which is pretty offset by that defense and magical defense decrease. That's, I don't know if I like that. <laughs> she does lose the lifesteal and gets her attack up. Honestly, this is kind of like a non-issue kind of thing. Like, you know, you could and you couldn't. Low priority. Ekarin is just straight up losing bulk and tankiness for attack. No, I wouldn't take this one. I didn't think that there would be such a decisive one like this one. Ray is gaining a little bit of attack some life steal which is okay for some hp honestly this is one of those ones where like the difference is kind of like negligible you can you don't have to it's not going to change anything rin is gaining quite a lot of hp uh one in defenses and losing some attack i like that if you use rin because she's a pure support it gives her more survivability i would i would definitely boost her up reno is losing attack but she is gaining 12 dodge okay 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 actually guys she's actually gaining a fair bit of survivability especially against the physical defense Defenses. And why I mention this is because, you know, like if the Tamaki hits the Reno, this, you know, this, if you put it in RNG's hands, this could save her. Only for a loss of 23 attack? Honestly, yeah, I would take that. But this is the gambler in me talking, so. Siren is losing HP defense for some attack, it's gaining uh, life steal. Mm. Okay, so I don't really like this too much because Siren, Siren is not exactly known for her damage. And there's a little bit of life steal I don't think is going to make too much of a difference to her survival. Survivability. The attack could definitely help, but she is like an enmity attacker. Like, so I quickly looked it up, and her skill is actually based on missing HP as a flat amount. For that reason, you actually want more HP so that she can get to a lower HP point. There's probably an argument to take it, but personally, I don't want to take that risk. I would rather have more HP and do more damage that way. But again, because she's a support, all of this is really lower priority. Shinobu is losing a fair bit of HP, but gaining a fair bit of attack back. Otherwise, she's got oh she's gaining some lifesteal again shinobu is a support uh lower priority but i would probably take this one shiori is losing a fair bit of bulk but she is gaining oh energy recovery as if she couldn't get any better and a, quite a fair bit of attack i will definitely take this shizuru is gaining attack are they trying to make her an attacker she's gaining lifesteal hello and she's losing a lot of stats so okay guys like i talk about how shizuru is not like a true tank and stuff and this this doesn't help that honestly especially in the context of arena i would rather her be tankier than doing more damage for those kinds of reasons i probably would not go in on this suzume is gaining a fair bit of stats actually and losing very little if you use suzume which pretty much nobody does which is sad i would do it from an arena perspective she's gaining favorable stats and losing things that don't really matter too much like three defense is not going to save her from tamaki suzuna is losing a little bit of bulk for some attack and that looks good i would take that for sure attacker and cb it gets more attack it doesn't get more simpler than that oh this is interesting tamaki is gaining hp gaining defense magic defense gaining dodge guys i see that dodge and that is a hundred percent take like i said tamaki already dodges a little bit already which is really annoying with this kind of dodge like that's just gonna get a little bit more mimi and she's only giving up 31 attack for all of these defensive stats yeah i would take that for sure yori is losing oh my god they really she is a real real cannon she's losing a fair bit of defensive stats but she is gaining that massive magic attack yeah to bust open those miyakos i would definitely take this yui is just gaining well okay that's straightforward but again healer is a lower priority Wait, why is why is Yui favored? What the frig? Yukari is losing attack for all of this bulk, which a lot of people could argue is actually a bad thing. A major part of Yukari's skill set is actually her UB, and if you're bolstering her defense, it's likely that she may actually take longer to charge her UB. It's mainly that point that I wouldn't take her up, but like if she's only losing 54 attack for all of these stats, like from that point of view, I really want to take her up. Again, if I was a casual and I saw this, I would freaking slam it because like, you know, everything she's gaining completely outweighs that 54 attack. But from a min-max point of view, I, I would still slam it because those stats are really pretty decent. But again, you need to keep in mind what I just said. It's the TP recovery. Maybe that will screw us over in clan battles. Please, I didn't debate you to do this. What you could do is actually pre-farm Yukari and then like when we get to the next clan battle you could do some testing first to see if she is able to get her UB up before some critical moments. If it's way too tight then I probably wouldn't up her but if it isn't I probably would. Last we've got Yuki who is gaining a lot and not really giving up too much. Okay if you're using Yuki especially in like the Reno comp this is pretty 
decent, except it doesn't really help her position in the Reno comp. Like she's gaining all of these stats, but like her main role is to give TP and to blind, both of which like they're not really affected by this. So if you're running Reno comp, Yuki's is like way, way lower. All right, guys, this is going to be a really long video. I hope you guys made your way through it. And I think this is a pretty comprehensive look at every single character. So let's wrap it up here. I've got a secret message for you. What is wave recovery? If you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it. it tells me that you've made it the end of the video and I really like that. Hard work. <laughs> it's appreciated. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment. You guys know the works. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.